Here she is as she used to be, with a life, children, and a husband who pulled a gun five years ago and shot her in the face. She was 40 years old. He left her with no jaw, no nose, no nerve endings, just a sliver of eyesight. Do you remember the first moment you realized how, bad you, how badly you'd been injured? Yeah, I saw it that night. That night? Yeah. Five months after the historic surgery, her nerves are rebuilding one inch every month. As of now, she still can't feel her own tears. Now, I'm just going to get another little tear here coming down your eye. See, I can't feel that. She is a woman of remarkable spirit and courage. She's decided to go on camera and tell her story because she wants to send a message to other victims of domestic abuse. If your husband threatens you in any way, it's going to get worse. Even if they say something to you, they tell you, oh, you're ugly, you're stupid. If somebody points something at you and they say they're going to do it, eventually they're going to do it. She said it's just too painful to give details about what led to the attack. I don't want to hurt the other side of the family because I love them. We had good times and bad times, so we'll just leave it at that. And did he try to find a way to say he was sorry? Oh, yeah, he told me he's sorry. I can't talk right now. I understand. I understand. Take a break. I still love my husband. I, I can't talk about him, okay? I'm not going to say whether... Whether I, he meant to do it or yeah, not? Yeah. Um, that's between me and him. Do you forgive him? I forgive him the day he did it. I have to. How? How could you? I don't know. It's just the way stuff was happening. I knew something bad was going to happen. I just never dreamed it was that. He was sentenced to seven years, she to a lifetime of pain. She underwent 27 surgeries just to function, while dreading having to walk out the door. Worst of all, she said, that she frightened young children. And a little girl said, there's a monster, Mommy, there's a monster. <laughs> so I took out my driver's license, and I told her, I told the mom that I said, if you don't care, I want to tell you, talk to your daughter. I said, but I had a bad, bad person shoot me. I said, that's why you never pick up a gun. And I said, to my driver's license, I said, this is what I used to look like. And the dad's like, no, no, you don't have to. I said, no, she needs to know that there ain't monsters, you know? And the little girl said, wow, you know? And the dad said, thank you. How often do you think of that picture on the driver's license. How often do you think of the way you looked then? You know what's so funny? I said, I hated that picture. Now I love that picture. Like, I, I worry about my weight and everything. I'm like, oh, that's so foolish, you know? Five months ago, thanks to a donor, she would once again have the chance to try to look in a mirror and see a face. She says, despite the difficulty of the surgery, she put herself in the hands of the brilliant surgeons at the Cleveland Clinic. How do you decide, I'm going to go for it, I'm going to do it? I can't live the way I was. There's no way. My whole face, I tell you, it was sliding on that last month before that surgery. I couldn't keep food in my mouth. It was terrible. The moments before the surgery, was there something you said to yourself? Was there something you did? Just gave my daughter a hug. Eight doctors working 22 hours rebuilt her skeletal structure, reconnected nerve endings, blood vessels at a microscopic level. There are some physicians who criticize the procedure as too new, too experimental, and too risky. What's the difference between the physicians who say, no, 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 on ethical grounds, I could never do this, yes. and those of you who say, no, this is something that can give a life back? I think it's, it's, it's a very good question, but it is the philosophical question in a way. And the person who can answer is really the patient. I don't think anybody really ima can imagine that you cannot have a face for three, four, five years. Isn't that amazing? Immediately after the surgery, a handful of small miracles. What was the first thing you smelled? I actually smelled my face soap. Really? And I realized. Then I could smell my mouthwashes. Uh-huh. Yeah. I said, wow, I, I can smell. Well, the first day yes. I'm feeling, it was when I got out, I was still in ICU, and I could smell spearmint gum. 
So when you looked in the mirror, what did you see? I, I saw my eye outlet out, outline, my hair, and I saw my nose, and that's about all I could see. Was it a big decision to look in the mirror? Not for me, no. I was curious. I already knew what I looked like by feeling it. Tell me the biggest difference for you, just the experience of waking up in the morning now. Well, uh, a real funny experience the first time I sneezed. I didn't know what to cover up. Because <laughs> I got the turd, you know, in my mouth, and I'm like, oh no, what to cover up? <laughs> I thought that was funny, though. But the first time I sneezed was really odd, because I got that tickle in the nose, and mm -hmm. I hadn't had it for five years. How much do you know about the donor? Nothing, just that she was my age and my height. Is there something you want to say to her family? write to you, her family? Oh, I just want to thank them so much for, you know, donating, because without them, I wouldn't have faith. You know, I want to be positive. I want to move on. When I woke up from that surgery, it's 2009. Everything's going to be great from here on out. It's going to be good. The new skin on her face is loose in case there is swelling. And there's a little more surgery to undergo? Yes, they're going to reduce this and take some of that away. We'll not be able to talk about her. Dr. Simonow says in a year, it will be different. Does this mean her expressions will be the donor's expression because of the structure, or will they be her I, old I, I believe it will be her old expressions. I think that's how our brain is recording the memory of, uh, of who we are in the way how we express ourselves. Mm -hmm. But it will take time. She will never look like the donor. Uh, she will uh, never look like herself um, past the years before trauma. But um, her expressions will be hers. And I think that's what will identify her, her as a con. For now, every day, a revelation. Her grandson hugging her. Babies don't care what you look like. They just love you no matter what. He even, when he saw me with my nose, he pinched it and gave me a big hug and just went on playing. You're he, working out on a treadmill? Oh, yeah. <sighs> That's got me up to 10 miles. <sighs> do you like to work out? Well, <laughs> <laughs> do I tell you the truth or do I pretend I do? And one more thing she wanted to be sure we told you, how much she loved the doctors and nurses who cared for her. I've heard patients yell at them and throw stuff at them. I'm like, how could you do that to take care of you? And I love all my nurses. They make me feel like family. And walking down the street, now, do you feel that you're you? Oh, I feel great walking down the street. Yeah, nobody pays any attention to me, you know? There's a song. Oh, yeah. That you love. Tim McGraw sings it. It's a song she thinks should be the anthem for every one of us every day. I loved deeper and I spoke sweeter and I gave forgiveness I'd been denied. And he said, someday I hope you get the chance to live like you were dying. It was perfect, didn't it?